carburetors and camshafts, wheels and tires, blood and sweat. These are just some of the things that go into making a great custom vehicle. For the most part, the cars and trucks we feature don't follow a specific recipe. Instead, they're constructed out of the ideas and parts that their owners cobble together when they have some free time and a few extra bucks in their pocket. Rides like this take time to build. They take hard work, perseverance, and at times a helping hand from friends and family. What you are about to see encapsulates this mindset fully, as it's not every day that someone can take a vehicle originally designed to haul farm equipment and instead make it haul some serious ass. My name is Mike Musto. Each week I travel a country with the goal of showcasing the best and baddest muscle cars and hot rods around. Every car has a past and every owner a story. Welcome to the world of big muscle. So this is a 1959 Chevrolet Apache pickup truck. It was never meant to go around a corner. It was never meant to stop great. It was never meant to do anything well, but haul a bunch of crap on your farm from point A to point B. This is the truck that you went and you put manure in, you put wood blocks in, you put anything you had and you took it wherever you needed to go to build other stuff. Wes saw this truck and he said, you know what, I like it. He liked it so much that he sold his relatively new Toyota pickup to turn this into his daily driver. Now, when he got it, this thing had a straight six in it, a lot of miles, four bow carburetor. He said it sounded great. He said, but it didn't have any, have any guts to it. So he started to modify it. And like all hot rods, as we, as we know, the more you modify, well, the more you modify. Right now, it's got a 383 small block in it, carved, not an LS, makes about 500 horsepower and 510 pound-feet of torque. It's got a Curry 9-inch, 373 gears, Ride Tech triple adjustables front and rear, massive 295 tires. So upon first glance, what do you, you notice? Well, for me, I noticed that the truck obviously did not look finished. You know, you, you've got a paint job on it, kind of. You've got everything on the inside is kind of there, right? It's all bare metal. It's got a dashboard and kind of brushed metal that's not painted. I don't have any window hinges, door handles. There's dynamite on the floor. There's a fender back there that's well not even on. So if I go like this and I look, I can just see the back wheel spinning and spinning and spinning. Uh, but it'll pull almost a G on the skin pad. And it'll rump on Porsches and Corvettes in corners. And it's a 55 year old Apache pickup. What? Uh, I bought this as a daily commuter. I sold my Toyota Tacoma um, to purchase this. I paid, not, obviously not the way it is now. I sold that, that, that truck for 7,800 bucks or 75 and I actually ended up spending a little bit more on to get this. But it was, it was the bed that really caught me, the, the fleet side, not a Cameo. And I wanted something that represented the old feel, the old school flavor and then obviously down the road turned into this. When I originally bought it, I, I wanted it because of the fleet side and the dual headlight in the front. I love the fleet side bed. It just, it has a cool 50s era, kind of like a uh, rocket ship, rocket race kind of stuff that they did back then, you know, with all the 50s cars that kind of translated. And to add to that, I put a um, 64 Chevy Nova Dash in it. It's a SS Dash with the chrome glove box some guys know what the chrome glove box means, but uh, it matches the lines of the back bed. Which really is the little touches that I like. Obviously he doesn't, in not caring about the looks of this truck, it made it so much better. So it's got quad headlights up front, but the inner lights he just pulled out and ran twin ram air tubes all the way up to the air cleaner and it looks it just looks cool like if you were to pull into a gas station and see this thing you would walk around and start to look at stuff and be like wait wait a minute and you would look at the scoops 
Then you would look at the rear. Then you would look underneath and see this crazy suspension with these crazy shocks under there. And you're going, oh, this, this guy knows something that I don't know. In regards to safety on this truck, there's one mirror. It's that one. I can see what's behind me, but I have no idea what's on either side. That's why we're just driving on a one lane road. This way we don't have to look. Another thing that you want to keep in mind about this truck is that it's fast. Like, stupid fast. It's one thing to put a, a V8 in, a, in a anything, right? In a hot rod, in a pickup truck, and go fast. It's another thing to put the same engine in a truck and make it go fast well. Those are two completely different things. Wes was saying that one of his goals is to get this thing down at around 3,000 pounds. And if he keeps the power the same, right? If he keeps the power at around 500 horsepower, but the truck weighs in at 3,000 pounds, and he still has that 51, 49 weight distribution, I mean, this thing is gonna be a killer. I mean, it's, it's really, really good now. But once those mods get done to it, but we're, we're talking a different handling vehicle. If I knew I was gonna go road racing from the beginning, I would have skipped everything I did in the middle ground and, and not have done it four times. There would have been so many trips saved and so much money. I, I probably spent way, way too much money on stuff that I shouldn't have. And not that those parts were bad, but that just wasn't the direction that I was doing. You know, like a drop axle or like a different rear end or a different tranny or a different engine. You know, I've had a couple combinations of stuff in here and they weren't what I, what I ultimately ended up with. We live a $200,000 lifestyle on a budget. So it is what it is, it's, it's what I can afford. The patina look is something I created one night in my boxers, you know, to make it look somewhat like how it is now. And I continually add to it. Um, I sprayed the hood and the top before Mike got here. And, you know, just worked its magic a little bit and it's only gonna get better from there. And I'm not worried about scratching it. I've got my keys resting right here right now and I don't care. You know, if you consider what a car payment is, right? A regular car payment, <clears throat> figure 300 bucks, 400 bucks a month, right? For not even a great car, just a, well, a decent car. So if you have a pickup truck like this and you've owned it for 10 years and you're putting 300 bucks a month into it, that's a substantial amount of money over time. So wouldn't you rather take that car payment and start to build something yourself and make it something that's truly your own that came from here and not somebody's dealership? I mean, that, that's, that's exactly what Wes is doing in this truck. You know, we, we try to bring you guys a combination of like shop builds and medium high end builds and then builds like this, which are just regular blue collar guys that know how to tinker, know how to weld and know how to build stuff. And, you know, that's what this is. It was built by a great guy who, let me, and let me tell you something about Wes. He's very, very humble. So he's going to tell you that this truck is ugly. He's going to tell you that, oh, I don't know. I don't really, you know, it, it needs this and it needs that. He's totally undervaluing this truck. The truck is absolutely fantastic. It looks great. It runs great. So whatever he says, it's better than what he says. Trust me. You know, obviously I want to thank the people that support me in the racing. My family is the first thing, my wife and my child. If they didn't allow me to do this, I, I, I wouldn't have gone this far and I, won't continue, I wouldn't continue to go this far. The shop, Deuces Wild Hot Rods, they've took me in like family. RJ Plant has come to my house and helped me do everything. He's helped me wire the truck when he didn't have to. Uh, he helped me get it ready for almost every race. Same with John uh, Meadows, the shop owner. And it's pretty cool that, that, uh, that anybody in this day will, will help somebody else out to, for the greater good, to, to, to do better. And I think that's awesome. That is awesome. And quite honestly, that's what this hobby is all about. It's not about money, it's not about fame, and it's not about winning. It's about sharing the love of these old vehicles updating them when we can, and ultimately keeping them on a road until the next generation of car enthusiasts takes them on. Thankfully for Wes, he's already created the next generation. So in regards to this truck, well, I think it's in pretty good hands. 
Uh-oh. Oh, we totally just got yelled at. He gave us the, what are you doing? What are you doing? Driving a truck. Well, he's a farmer. He was probably like, that's not a farm truck. I feel like I want to roll my sleeve up and put a pack of cigarettes in there. I'd slick my hair back, but then people would be like, you don't have any hair. Maybe I'd slick some of it back. I'd slick a few strands back. They'd be like, oh, that doesn't really look good, but I'd see where you're going with this. You know, it's interesting. There's a feature in this truck that Wes pointed out to me. It's the chrome glove box. Now, according to folklore, the chrome glove box was an option, and that option was placed in the truck by the designers so the driver could look over at the box and look up a lady's skirt. Look over the box and see the box. Look over the box and see the box, yes, so to speak. Unfortunately, Thaddeus is sitting in that seat, so if I look over at the box, I'm going to get a face full of bubble gum, and nobody wants that. Nobody wants it. 